All right, welcome back to My Clutching Guy. I'm here with uh, William Clausen of Ibex. Last time we looked at the primary clutch and how it works. This time we're going to be looking over the secondary clutch and William here is going to explain how it works. William, how are you today? I'm not too bad. Thank you for joining me on this show again. Good deal, good deal. All right, so here we have the secondary clutch. You want to explain to me all the bits and pieces and how it works and uh, how it's going to affect my sled? Yeah, let's come around here to the other side so that we can be a little more close and personal. Go ahead. All right, here we have the new prototype Ibex double shift clutch. I figured I'd use it as an example. Good deal. All right, you want to explain to me all the little uh, bits and pieces of the secondary clutch and how it works? Yes, sir. So, what we have here is the back side here is the movable sheave. It's the opposite of what we learned on the primary. Okay. The primary, the front sheave moves, the secondary, the back sheave moves. Okay. This here is the fixed sheave, be the opposite of a movable one. It sits mm -hmm. still. Then <clears throat> we have the helix and the helix cap. And then inside, which you can't see very well, but we have what is often referenced as the spider for the secondary clutch. This transfers the power from the helix to the power shaft, which is your drive shaft, either going into the transmission on a UTV or into your chain case or belt drive on a snowmobile. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. So you explained um, that this is a prototype IVEX uh, secondary clutch. So what are these holes right here that you've got incorporated in here? So on this particular clutch and on some snowmobiles and some UTVs, the Can-Am is one of them, you have a torsion spring instead of a compression spring on the inside. This is a torsion spring. It will compress like a compression spring, but it also has twist. And when you twist it, it essentially increases the force of the spring. This little holes in this cap gives you the ability to tighten or loosen that to change the shifting characteristics of your vehicle. Okay, so explain to me, if I tighten it, um, what would that do to the shifting? Usually, if you tighten it, you'll gain RPM. If you loosen it, you'll lose RPM. Oh, okay, okay. And what tool would I use to do that? Over here, got a little example. This is um, our tool that actually comes with our Can-Am clutch kits. And this gives you the ability to twist the helix cap and tighten your spring up or loosen it. This this is our newest design which is a little newer than what you saw on our prototype clutch. This one gives you a full 360 degrees and that is a helix package that's included in our Can-Am clutch kit. Oh so th this this particular one comes off of the Can-Am? Yes. So if I'm out in the dunes and I need to adjust the shifting characteristics of my Can-Am I can keep these in the back and I can I can change that just on the go, right? Yes. While it's still on the vehicle, it's one to two minute job. And I just did it the other day and we gained 300 RPM with a 45 degree twist. It was wonderful because the guy went from 30 inch tires to 32 inch tires and he had lost about 300 RPM. And we swapped that out and boom, he was back to tack and beating everybody on the dunes. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> well, so go so <clears throat> we've talked about the spring. We've pointed out the helix, but I wanted to go over what the helix is a little bit more. There's a few different kinds. This is a helix off of a Razor. This is a Can-Am helix. You saw the one in our double shift. Mm -hmm. They look different, but they all do the same thing. They're kind of like a bolt. Um, if you think of the threads on a bolt, as you tighten it, it goes one way, as you loosen it, it goes the other way and it comes in and out. Right. So as that clutch goes in and out, this thing's twisting. Th this ramp, we can set the angles on. And that is incredibly critical to maintaining belt force and maintaining RPM when you're climbing hills or going across flat ground. And this particular thing is probably something we want to go into as an episode of self because of the complexity of it. But the idea is everybody tries and does their own package. 
something that we try and do specifically is we run computer programs to match this shape with the shape of our primary weights because the two of them work together to keep the belt tight and to keep you in the correct gear all the time. Great, so we'll have to make an episode where we can explain how the different angles will adjust the shifting characteristics, right? Yes. Well, William, uh, thank you very much for explaining the uh, secondary clutch to me, um, and thank you for tuning in for episode three of My Clutching Guy. Next time, we're going to be looking at the uh, primary and secondary clutch and how they work in conjunction with each other, and uh, hopefully, William, I will be seeing you next time. Sounds good. Thank you. All right.